Today, I'm going to be spending the next 100 days in starter-only Pixelmon. The only Pokemon that I am able to catch and use are starter Pokemon. Now, I have a few goals in mind for my 100 days, and they, of course, are... Firstly, to find myself two shiny starter Pokemon. Secondly, to get every single starter Pokemon I possibly can throughout the 100 days. And finally, take on the legendary Cyro Trainer with a team of level 100 Pokemon. Now, will I be able to complete all these challenges by the end of the 100 days? Stay tuned to find out. You know what? We're going to switch up and we're going to pick our boy Chespin. There we go. We have a shiny Chespin to start us off in this 100 days. Look at our little boy. Hey! I figured it'd be a great idea to head around the spawn area and find as many of the treasure chests as we possibly can. So with that, we have opened up as many treasure chests as we could possibly find. And... Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, we've been given so many starter Pokemon, bro. <laughs> we've just been given a Charmander and a Froakie. I mean, I guess I'll take it. I mean, <laughs> shout out to Phantom 2K21 for the two starters. I appreciate it, sir. Hey. And with that, we can now open up our new lucky blocks. Okay, so we've got ourselves two uncommons and six common lucky blocks. And Dapunda has just sent me a Squirtle. What? These guys are crazy right now. <laughs> okay. So, I, I literally... The guys asked me on the server what I was recording today. And I told them I was recording a starter-only video. And just like that, we've been given a Bow Perfect Torchic. We've got a Squirtle, level 93 for some reason. A Froki, level 12. And a Charmander, level 15. Now, I am going to go ahead and keep hold of these guys, but I, if I do find more of them in the wild, I will, of course, go ahead and catch another one of each of these just to keep it fair for the video. But without that, I'm going to go do my lucky blocks real quick. So we've got number one. Boom. And we get an upgrade straight away. Let's go. And what? Wait, what? No. Okay. What? <laughs> and with that, we catch ourselves an Empoleon from our first lucky block that broke. Oh my gosh. The start of this 100 days is actually going insane right now. What? We already have a full team of star Pokemon in the first few days. This is crazy. Okay, let's open up the next one. Boom. We get a Swallow. Next, we get a Greninja. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and finally, we get another upgrade. What is going on? What is this? Oh my gosh. Okay, let's open them up. No, I'm done. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm actually done. What is going on? This is the luckiest I've ever seen it before. A shiny Greninja. Okay, we get a Karen Durant. We get a Frostmoth, a Cubone, and finally a shiny Roserade. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and defeat all of these guys because we don't need them. Now, I can't lie to you guys. This has been a very insane start to the 100 days. And with that, I mean, I better go ahead and check out my PC now. We've already got our two starter Pokemon, of course, being... We, we, I mean, we've got two Greninjas and a Froakie, which is pretty insane. But we have got two shiny Pokemon with Chespin and Greninja. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't worry, guys, though, because we have so many starter Pokemon to catch. So there is a lot more catching to come. Next, I want to create some sort of museum or zoo, which has every single base stage evolution starter Pokemon. So by getting dupes like this is actually quite good because now we can use this Froakie for the new zoo that we will go ahead and create eventually. But for now, I'm going to explore a little bit more and see if I can find any more starter Pokemon. So I have just been running around looking for a place to live and I've come across Poonda's base, which is a giant flat area. Now, for our zoo, we need a massive area inside of some sort of mountain, I was thinking. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the perfect location to do so. And to help with making the giant zoo, he's given me a full set of thunder armor, including a never right pickaxe, which mines stone relatively quickly. So we can now spend a little bit more time burrowing into the mountain and making a giant area for all of our new starter Pokemon. My idea for this one is basically that I want to have a bunch of areas just like this one with a bunch of glass in front that will have all of the starter Pokemon inside. So for example, we're going to have the water Pokemon, we're going to have the fire Pokemon, and also the grass Pokemon in each of the different areas. So I'm going to make up a bunch of areas right now, and then we will be back. Just quickly, guys, I am currently in a race with Nintendo percent 
to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of 2024. Make sure to hit that sub button. It takes two seconds and I promise you won't regret it. And there we go. Okay, so we've opened up a massive area in our base right here. Now, if we head on inside, we have a bunch of different rooms right here. We've got all four different rooms for all of our starter Pokemon. Obviously, there's only three types, but I do have a fourth area. Now, the reason I've got a fourth area is because I figured we could put our special shiny Pokemon into one area as well. Okay, now, in order to build up all of the areas, we obviously need a bunch of different materials. For the fire area, we create some sort of like volcano, maybe. I think it would be quite cool looking. Okay, so we've got like a little rocky area right here. What we're going to do is get a bit of lava and we're going to pour it down from up here. And then hopefully it will just lead down into like a little pool of lava down the bottom right here. Now, hopefully if we grab ourselves some lava now, we'll be able to have it flow down and it'll look like a perfect little lava area. Ow! No! Ah! <laughs> and with that, I'm actually quite happy with the new area that I've created for my Fire-type Pokemon. Now, all we have to do is collect up the Fire-type Pokemon, and then hopefully I'll be able to place them all in here just like this. And there we go. Okay, perfect. So we've created the water area, made it nice and watery, I'd say. You've got, obviously, Squirtle, who is sat inside of a rubber ring. Because we obviously have our boy Squirtle right here. We also have our Froakie, which we got earlier on, who is set up on a tree. And then if we spin it around, we now have Charmander, this guy right here. And also our Torchic sat in the fire habitat. Now, the last one that we need to get hold of, of course, is our Empoleon. We need to get hold of a Piplup. So I figured the best way to go about that would be just to breed. Or we can try and find one. So for now, we're leaving Piplup out of the habitat. Now, we've been building for quite a little while. So what we're going to do now is spend a little bit of time out of the base. And we're going to go out and have a little hunt. Hopefully, we can find something cool. We're going to head out and try and find any new starter Pokemon to introduce to our habitats. Okay. So, I've been waiting around for a Chimchar to spawn, but instead of getting a Chimchar, we've managed to get ourselves another Charmander. <laughs> another Charmander. Are you crazy? What? Uh, okay, well, I guess we'll go ahead and catch a Charmander anyway, if we can. Um, what can we do to damage this thing? I'm thinking maybe we go into the shop and we buy ourselves a bunch of Quick Balls. There we go. Perfect. Oh, no. Not my Charmander. Woo! Let's go, baby. Come on. We have got a Chimchar right here. Let's go ahead and catch this guy. Finally, after days of searching, Chimchar has appeared. Is that a no way. It's a wild Charizard that just spawned too. Oh my gosh. Shame we already have a Charmander, but that is still very cool to see. Anyways, I need to stop getting distracted. I also bought myself a fishing rod thinking, you know, we can do some fishing in the night, get ourselves a Froakie. Little did I realize we already have a Froakie. I mean, we have technically got three. Now, while I was exploring around a little bit, though, I did find something just around the corner. The Dark Forest during the daytime is where a Snivy spawns. So that is the next starter Pokemon that we're going to be looking for is, of course, a Snivy. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take to find Mr. Snivy, but we're going to spend a little bit of time here having a little search around and hopefully we can come across a new starter Pokemon. Hang on. No way. No way have I just spotted that. No way. <laughs> Wait, what? Chikorita right there. And I saw something through the little forest bit there. If you can see it, it's a Snivy. Oh my gosh. Let's go. We need to quickly catch these before every Pokemon despawns. Oh my gosh. And there we go. We have caught the Chikorita. Now let's head on over to the Snivy and catch that as well. And we we won't catch the Snivy because we murdered it. Oh, uh, that's such a shame, man. Rip. Well, I guess it's time to head back. We're going to put our Chimchar into the new enclosure. And there we go. Chimchar is now sat happily inside of the fire enclosure. Hey, that's so sick. I'm actually so happy with the enclosures. Although I am now thinking they are probably a bit too small for the Pokemon that they got hold. Like, obviously, there's nine different Pokemon that need to fit in here. And I think it's going to get very clustered very quickly when we get more than like five or six. So maybe we should extend these at some point during this hundred days. 
Same with the water one. I don't know how we're going to fit all nine starters in here. Now, what we need to do here, of course, is make ourselves a new enclosure for the grass Pokemon. So I figured maybe we go out and hunt a couple more starter Pokemon, and then we come back and continue making our enclosures. Oh my gosh. So we literally just randomly RTP'd out into a spruce forest, and I'm pretty sure, if I'm seeing that correctly, there's a Rowlet over here. Now let's head on over. There it is. Oh my gosh. I, I, I did not expect to find that. I was trying to find a desert biome. There we go. We have caught the level seven Rowlet. Hey, let's go. So we've just come across a, a jungle biome. Now I'm pretty certain if I am correct in saying so, the starter Pokemon we want to look for here is going to be a tree coat. My favorite starter Pokemon of them all. Okay, so daytime inside of a jungle. So let's wait for daytime and then we're going to try and find a Trico. So as the sun is rising now, I've managed to find this platform that is right above the jungle area and it's flat. So it spawns a bunch more Pokemon on it. So I guess we're just going to sit on this platform for a little while and hope that we can get a Trico to spawn. Just running around on bottom to see if I had any spawns down here. And I heard... There it is! Yes! I thought I heard a Trico. Let's go! We have found... A Trico sat in the tree right here. Holy, let's go. My favorite starter. I'm actually so hyped for this one. Come on. Let's try not to murder this one like we did with the Snivy because that'd be awful. And there we go. We have caught the level 15 Trico. Holy, that was good. Okay, perfect. Let's head back to the enclosure. There we go. Perfect. So now that we have four different grass type starters, I think it's time that we start making the zoo for them. Problem is, the zoo here is kind of, <laughs> well, I don't want to say small, um, but it is not going to be big enough for what we need. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and expand this out real quick. Three, two, one. And there we go. We now have a new and improved water area right here with a little icy area with some snow. We've got a lot more back room now and the room itself just looks so much better for all of our water type starters. Now we just need to continue with our new fire area. So let's just stand right about here. And there we go. Look at this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. What do you prefer, the fire area or the water area? Now all this left to do is figure out where we want to do the grass area. Problem is, we don't really have a lot more room. So I think we're going to have to spend a little bit of time doing some excavating. And there we go. Okay, so we've mined out a massive area for the new grass place. So what I'm thinking we do, so we've got the corridor here for the water and the fire. And then you head out down this corridor and then you have a massive area here, which is going to be a pathway from here to here, where you can see all of the area where the grass Pokemon are. But before we go ahead and start building the grass area, I figured it would be a good time to head out and maybe search for another starter Pokemon. Now I'm thinking we go for a Piplup because the Piplup is going to be quite an easy one to find on the snow biome. So we're in the correct biome. We just need to find ourselves a river or a frozen beach. Now, does this count as a frozen river? Frozen river. There we go. Okay, so we are in the correct biome. Let's just wait around here and hopefully we can get ourselves a Piplup. So another way that we can go ahead and get ourselves some starter Pokemon is, of course, by going onto the GTS. So we do have a Cyndaquil on here, which we could go ahead and buy. But for this challenge, I am limiting myself to only be able to buy one starter Pokemon of, of each type. So we could go ahead and get ourselves a Cyndaquil. But is Cyndaquil going to be the hardest one to find? Probably not. So we are going to save our starter Pokemon from the GTS for now. Okay, so it's been night for a hot minute now, and I have not actually seen any Piplups spawning. I'm probably going to quickly do Slash Home and reset the spawns. Is there any Piplups in the wa- Wait! Oh my gosh, wait. No way! Woohoo! Let's go! Caught ourselves the little Sobble in the quick ball right there. Hello, sir. Welcome to the team. Instead of finding a Piplup, we found a Sobble. And instead of finding another Piplop after that, we find a Charmander, which we already have. Oh my gosh. All right, so while we're waiting for a Piplop to spawn, I managed to get myself a hold of a couple lucky blocks. So let's go ahead and open these bad boys up. Hopefully, we can get a starter Pokemon. Uh, uh, not a single starter Pokemon. I mean, we'll, we'll take it, I guess. It's not really that good, though. 
Shiny Titar is great. Shiny Gogo -Go is great. But it's not a starter Pokemon. So that is a big rip. Right, let's continue our search. And hopefully, we will be back when we find ourselves up. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. I guess we won't be back because we found a Piplop, guys. Um, bruh. Hey, finally, we have ourselves a Piplop and a Sobble. Now we need to go ahead and get ourselves one more fire type Pokemon. Then we'll head back and continue building our grass habitat. Bro, I kid you not. What is going on? Like, I just spawned. What is going on? So there is a Bulbasaur right here. I was literally just over there looking for a Piplup, just off in the distance over there. And as I'm traveling to find a Savannah biome for my fire type starters, I have just come across a Bulbasaur and a tiny Caterpie, but we don't, we don't care about the Caterpie. Anyway, we have come across a Bulbasaur, so let's go ahead and catch this boy right here. Oh my gosh, I actually cannot believe that. We have caught ourselves a Bulbasaur, and it looks like our Charmander is about to evolve. And here we are. We have made it to the correct biome we're looking for, which, of course, was a Savannah biome. Cyndaquil and Tepig are able to be found in this biome, so we're going to have a little look around, see if we can find any of those, and then we'll be back. Well, <sighs> what is going on? We... We go to a biome, we look for a certain Pokemon, and then we don't find the Pokemon. This is actually crazy. Like, we found a Victini. What? what? We're going to go ahead and try and catch this guy real quick. Here we go. No. Are you kidding me? I was throwing quick balls at the Victini, so I kept on leaving the battle and then re-entering the battle to get it. I left the battle just a second ago, and the Victini has just disappeared. What? No. I think we just lost the Victini. No. Oh, that's so sad, man. What? Bruh. Well, never mind. I guess we won't be catching ourselves a Victini. Let's continue the hunt for Cyndaquil or Tepig. Hey, and there we go. We have found ourselves a Tepig. Let's go ahead and try and catch this guy real quick. On the fall of the next day, we have finally managed to catch the boy, Mr. Tepig, right here. Even though it's a female. So the girl, Mrs. Tepig, is the correction there. Now we just have to wait for daytime, I think. Let's have a little look real quick. Mr. Cyndaquil is in the daytime inside of the... Oh, so that one actually spawns in the Badlands. We're in the Savannah, so we're actually going to have to beat our TP out into a Mesa Biome in order to find that guy. So we're going to head out, find a Mesa Biome, and hopefully we can find ourselves a Cyndaquil. And finally, we have made it home to our base. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find any of the Pokemon we are looking for. But what we can go ahead and do is add in our new additions to the zoo. And uh, there we go. So we've added in the Piplup right there in the icy area. And then there is a Sobble on the tree. And there we go. We have our boy Tepig sat right there as well. Actually, I think it's a Mrs. Tepig. So our girl Tepig is sat right there as well in the fire enclosure. Now we have four in here and four in here. And I gotta say, this is really starting to come together. Like, you can see pretty much everyone from this angle right here, and I am loving it. Ooh, okay, so I've just logged onto the server, and there is a random tournament starting. So let's go ahead and join this up. Okay, so this is the team that we are going to be going with. We have, of course, Seeking, Kabutops, Uxi, Silvalli, and it is a bug type. We have a Rotom Wash and a Kartana. I'm thinking we replace Seeking. We get a Como O. Ooh, okay. I'm happy with that. All right. So we have got our team right here. Uh, who do we want to start with? I think we're going to start with Uxie just so you turn out and see what happens. Here we go. Okay. Eventually. And we take down Marada. There we go. GG's. Now we just need to wait around for the next round of the tournament to start. And we are back in the second round of the tournament. Two hours later. Ah, oh, that is a GG's right there. Unfortunately, we do get taken out of the tournament. GG's to Raztor for taking me out there. We now need to get started with building our next habitat, which of course is the grass one. We've got a bunch of Pokemon ready to go in here. So... Let's build it. Three, two, one, boom. There we go. We have created the grass type habitat. We've got a little area up here as well, which has got a bunch of fences where you can have a little viewing area of all of the flying type grasses Pokemon that we get. So for example, like our Rowlet, which will sit on top of the trees. 
I made a lot of progress on this base. So I think that it's time that we head out and look for some more grass type Pokemon. But first things first, we need to add in our grass type Pokemon into the habitat. And there we go. We now have our shiny Chespin and Chikorita having a little talk over here. We have little Bulbasaur as well. And we also have our Rowlet and our Trico up on the top area. So all these areas are really starting to come together now. And I am loving how all of these have turned out so far. I'm very happy that I made a little bit more room because it looks a lot better now. But we haven't got too much longer left of the 100 days. So what we need to do now is head out and try and find as many starter Pokemon as we possibly can. So we need to get ourselves nine starters in total for each type. We obviously have five for our grass. So we are four more on that one. We need five more on the water and five more on the fire. Now, one way that I thought that maybe we could go ahead and do this would be to go ahead and create some sort of war zone team that we can use to head into the war zone and hopefully find some more starter Pokemon. Okay, so it looks like this season of the war zone is actually OU, which means that we can bring in a lot of very powerful Pokemon. So what we're going to do is head onto the GTS, see what starter Pokemon are on here real quick. Okay, so from what it looks like, the only starter Pokemon on there that we don't already have is a Score Bunny and a Cyndaquil. And if we check our balance real quick, we have 69 Okay, so we can go ahead and actually buy one of these starter Pokemon. Um, but I think for now, I am going to hold off. Okay, so we do have other Pokemon right here. So let's bring in the Ghastly and the Tyranitar. And then I think we'll bring in Rotom. Looks like the team that we have right now is actually going to work. So let's head over to our chests real quick. We need to grab out an EXP. Oh, let's put that thing on. So if we head over to the warp training area, we can spend a little bit of time leveling up all of our Pokemon to level 100 and then head into the war zone. And hopefully we can find some new starter Pokemon. So now that we've got our team at two level 100, I think that it is time that we try and head into the war zone. Now let's go in now, 240 seconds. Hopefully we can find ourselves a couple starter Pokemon. And here we are, the new war zone map. It looks like we've got a Christmas theme this time. Looking good. Although it really does remind me of the last one that we had. So maybe it's similar. I'm not too sure. Who have we got over there? We've got a random guy over there. I ain't going to fight him if he does not fight me. Hopefully we can chill together. Although actually, you know what? We're going to take him on. We're going to take him on and see if we can beat him here. We're confirming our team. And this is a really cool new layout. I actually love this so much. Holy. Okay. So we are up against a Bruxish first. I've got a feeling that this is a throw team. I'll be honest. Um, but we're going to take it on and see uh, what happens here. Because let's be real. Who brings a Bruxish into the war zone? Looks like Greninja is pretty much going to sweep this entire team, which is amazing. We don't really want any of his Pokemon. Um, so I'm going to just leave it and hopefully it won't make me take one. Let's just wait. Hopefully we can just leave it. I don't really want to take any of this guy's Pokemon because I feel bad. So we're just going to leave it and wait the 15 seconds. Hopefully... It doesn't steal anything. But if it does, then that is a rip. Okay, it gave us a tentacle. Okay, that's fine. Ooh, okay. So we have ended up finding a Rillaboom, which is kind of good because we don't have a Grookey yet. But I am just going to go ahead and catch this guy just so if we do lose a Pokemon in the war zone, we have another one that we can bring in. We have a player who's like sneaking around watching me as well. I don't know who it is, though. There we go. We caught ourselves a Rillaboom. Perfect. And there's a Celesteela that just spawned. Oh, my gosh. Wait, we need that. We need that. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's not a star Pokemon, so we can't actually use it. But that is still very, very cool. There we go. Okay, we caught ourselves the Celesteela. No, I keep finding star Pokemon. And I found a Rowlet, which obviously is not what we need. Ah, this is so annoying, man. I, I think what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and just catch a bunch of starter Pokemon so that we can actually turn our Warzone team into a full team of starter Pokemon. Because right now we have got only half a team of starter Pokemon. So if we can catch a full team, that will make our lives a lot easier. But unfortunately, I'm just not seeing a lot of starter Pokemon. Usually when I go into the Warzone on these videos, I see so many starter Pokemon. But of course, when I actually need them, they just decide that they don't want to spawn, which is really, really annoying. But I'm sure that we'll be able to find some very, very soon, I hope. And we find ourselves a Primarina as well, which is a huge starter Pokemon. And a wait, what? A Diancie has just spawned in the war zone. Oh, please be on me. Please be on me. Okay, come on. We need to catch this Primarina quickly. Where is it? Where is it? I don't think it's on me, guys. No, there's a shiny over there. 
But I don't want it. I want the Diancy. Nobody's gone into the battle with the Diancy just yet. Oh my gosh. Wait, there's a guy right here. It could have been him. Oh no. Where is the Diancy? There's a Sceptile right here. It's a shiny. Oh, now we have to. We have to stop for the shiny Sceptile. Oh my gosh. We're catching this guy. Holy. And the Diancy just despawned as well. That is so sad, man. No. But we did catch ourselves a Sceptile, which is amazing. Oh, okay. So we have just managed to come across a Score Bunny, which we don't have yet. So we're going to go ahead and try and catch this guy as well. There we go. Perfect. We have captured a score bunny. You know what? We're going to fight him. We're going to fight him and see if we can take him out. There we go. Okay, so he seems to have a very good team, but he does have a Torterra, which is actually kind of huge. He does have a lot of grass types, though. So we're going to have to be very, very careful here. Um, let's go into our Charizard to start with. Here we go. So we do take the L here. And he does take the shiny Thai Ranatar, which is completely fine. But what we'll go ahead and do is add on the Rillaboom. And we now need to get our Rillaboom back leveled up. And then we're going to head back over to the Warzone. And of course, if we head into the Warzone bank as well, we have a bunch of new Pokemon that we can go ahead and claim. Of course, we have the Rowlet. We had the Primarina, the Sceptile, and the Score Bunny. Let's go. And then what we'll do is head back into the Warzone. And hopefully we can get our ourselves some new starter pokemon mudkip wait do we need mudkip okay i think we actually do need a mudkip so we're gonna take that okay finally we actually found one that we genuinely need <laughs> Oh my gosh, an Urshifu has spawned in the war zone somewhere as well. Why does this happen every time that I'm catching something? Come on. Is the Urshifu on us? I don't see it anywhere. Oh, I see it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I see it. Let's go. Okay, now we actually need to try and catch this guy. Oh my gosh, that's two legendary Pokemon now that we found. Whether or not we'll be able to catch this thing is a different story, but we're going to try our very best. Hopefully we can catch it. Problem is we don't actually have like a Mazda Ball or anything, so it's not going to be an easy catch. But we're going to try our best to catch the Urshifu. Well, every time that I'm in the war zone and I'm doing a challenge that doesn't involve legendaries, I always seem to find so many legendary Pokemon, which is so sad. Wait, wait, th this guy might actually be able to just give me a Master Ball. Oh, wait, wait, but do I have to leave the battle to get it? Oh, no, it's right there. There we go. Thank you, Drip, my guy. I appreciate that. Mr. Alolan Raichu which I think his name is Dripsatron. So thank you very much to you, sir. Shout out to you if you do see the video. I very much appreciate it. Let's go. And there's another Mudkip. And there's another Piplup. Bruh. Let's go into our Warzone bank. And we're going to drop off the Urshfu and the Mudkip. There we go. <laughs> yes, come on. I actually, I, I can't lie. I'm very happy with what we've got so far. Like We've come out with some pretty good stuff. What we're going to do now is, well, I mean, let's chuck these guys into their habitats real quick and there we go we have our mudkip right there and we have our score bunny right over here as well oh we're getting so close this is looking so so good i'm so excited let's head back into the war zone now and see if we can find a couple more pokemon hey there we wait oh no there's a heat tram but there's also a turtwig okay we're doing priorities guys priorities we go for the turtwig we go for the turtwig and then we go for the heat tram there's no way another legendary pokemon has just spawned on me that is crazy and it despawned it doesn't matter because we got the start pokemon right because turtwig was the priority right there i'm sorry guys i failed i didn't get the heat tram but Ooh, there is an Eevee. Now, I am going to go ahead and catch this purely because we have, obviously, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. So, technically speaking, Eevee and Pikachu are also starter Pokemon. We don't have a habitat for them, but I'm going to go ahead and catch them anyway. Come on, there's got to be something else. I mean, either way, we have caught a decent amount of starter Pokemon through using the War Zone. So that is always super helpful. And it has helped us a little bit and given us a pretty big boost. Plus, it's been very entertaining for me fighting a bunch of different players as well so shout out to anyone that i did battle win or loss really appreciate you actually being a good sport and taking the battle okay so i managed to log onto the server today and got my daily reward which ended up being five common lucky blocks so hopefully we can open these bad boys up and maybe we'll be able to get something good we've got that punda with us today looking like an absolute legend with his drippy stuff on right here the discord nitro like pokey band i guess you'd call it which looks amazing darimaka 
Lediba, Braxin, Torchic, and Joltic. They're all like yellow and orange Pokemon. Like the odds of that is crazy, but we did manage to get two Pokemon. Although I'm pretty sure if we head back in here, we already have Torchic. But I think what we're going to do now is head back into the war zone for one more time because it's been a while since we've been on the server. So let's go to the war zone, check it out and see if we can find anything cool. Okay, so we've made it into the war zone. I don't know if we are going to be able to find anything, but if we find some players, maybe we'll fight them. See if we can get ourselves some new starter Pokemon. But if not... After we spent a bit of time in the war zone, we will actually this time head out and see if we can find some wild starter Pokemon. Hey, there we go. We have found our first starter Pokemon that we haven't already got, which of course is a Totodile, which we can go ahead and add straight to our water enclosure, which is huge. I, I'll be honest, I didn't think I was going to find any more starter Pokemon, but I will definitely take it. Let's go. No, we didn't get the Totodile because we got kicked from the war zone because we ran out of time. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Okay, we need to head back in. Bruh. Oh, that's really not good. Come on, please. Okay, we're back. We need to hopefully find it. There's a Rowlet. There are so many Pokemon right here. Oh, my gosh. Um... Hold it out. Ooh, go, 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 go. Come on, please. No, we are glitched. What do you mean? And now there's a Celesteela that just spawned. I know it's right there. <laughs> Wait, can we get it? Let's see. Oh, or are we glitched? Yes, we got it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's hit it with a quick ball. Hopefully we can catch a Celesteela. I'm pretty sure we... We already have a Celesteela though, right? Uh, let's hit it with the Dragon Claw. Hopefully we don't murder it. Okay, we do no damage, but that's good. Hey, there we go. We caught the Celesteela. Let's go. That is huge. I think that's our second Celesteela now. And luckily, the Totodile is still here, but we can't fight him. No, what is going on? Come on, please. Please. Why can't I fight? I'm so confused. Come on, Totodile. Why can I not fight? Why you not fight? Hopefully we can come back in and get that Totodile because we still have not caught the stupid Totodile. Okay, let's go to the Warzone Bank. Let's claim our Celesteela. There we go. And then we're going to head back in again. Hopefully, we can actually do stuff now and not get bugged because we're just wasting money at this point. Okay, we are back into the Warzone. Now we just need to try and find that Totodile. Although Puna just... Wait, I want to spawn on me. No way. <laughs> Yes, let's go. <laughs> Honestly, the luck on that is crazy. Oh no, there's someone here. Is he going to try and fight me is the question. Oh. <sighs> okay, he seems to be friendly, which is good. Okay, we're good. We're good. Woo. We just need to catch this Totodile. There we go. We caught the Totodile finally. And it doesn't look like there's any other starter Pokemon around here that we can go ahead and catch. So let's continue looking. Okay, so we have found another legendary Pokemon, which of course is a Uxie. It doesn't really help us too much though. So we're going to try us to catch it, but I don't think that it's going to be very good. And... No, my war zone time has ended. So I don't even get to catch the Yuxi. No. Just three lads sat on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> we're just um we're just getting some screenshots right now for the guys. Um and we're <laughs> sat on some stupid frog chairs. <laughs> So shout out to Caleb and of course, Dapunda. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, let's get back to what we're meant to be doing anyway. <laughs> Which of course is heading back over to our zoo area. And we can chuck in our new Pokemon. We have completed Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, not quite Gen 5. We've done Gen 6, not quite Gen 7, not quite Gen 8. And we've got just the one on Gen 9. So we've got a bunch of starter Pokemon now. We just need to catch one, two, three, four, five, six more starter Pokemon. And then we have completed all of our challenges for this 100 days. So let's go ahead and add all of our new Pokemon into their habitats. There we go. Our water habitat is now updated with, of course, Mr. Quaxi right here doing his hair. And Totodile sat up on the ice up there. We have completed the fire area as well, adding in Litten and our Fennekin. And of course, Mr. Cyndaquil right there as well. Um, we didn't actually get any new grass stars, so, uh, we're not gonna add anything to this one. So we are still looking for a Snivy and an Oshawa. So let's head out and see if we can find them. Hey, finally, we got ourselves a spawn. We got ourselves a Snivy to spawn in the Ultra Space, which is one of the Pokemon that we need, of course, for our Generation 5 starter Pokemon. Now that we've got this guy, all that we need to do is find ourselves an Oshawa. 
And then we've completed Gen 5 and are one step closer to completing all of our goals. And there we go. We have found the Oshawa finally, which we can go ahead and catch now, completing our Generation 5 starter Pokemon. That is a full six generations of starter Pokemon. All that we have left now is one more in Gen 7, one more in Gen 8, and two more in Generation 9. We are so close, guys, so make sure to stay tuned to the end to see what all of our enclosures are going to look like with all of the starter Pokemon inside. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I haven't found... Well, I just found a Fennekin. I haven't actually found the biome I'm looking for yet, but I have just come across a Paradox Garchomp called the Iron Rocket. So we're going to go ahead... Get into a battle with this thing. And we're going to try our best to catch it because this is very, very cool looking. And hey, I mean, even if we did catch it, maybe we'd be able to trade this with another player to get a starter Pokemon. I've set the server a little task. If anyone can get me two of the Pokemon that I need, they will receive the Iron Rocket in exchange. There we go. Okay, so we have received two of the Pokemon we need. A shiny Grookey and a Popio from Datpunda. So let's go ahead and pokey gift him the Pokemon. There we go. We'll give him number six. There we go, sir. Thank you very much. There we go. And now with the help of Poonda, we now, of course, have a Poplio and a Grookey, which means the only two that we need now are the Sprigatito and Fuecoco. And then we have completed every goal in this 100 days let's chuck all of our pokemon into their enclosures and then we're gonna head out and try and find the last two starter pokemon and there we go okay so we've added in the poplio swimming down in the water right here and the grookey is just chilling up here our shiny boy on the tree now we just need to find two more starter pokemon oh my gosh we are very very close guys there's a chair here now apparently as well in the doorway which is great out Okay, so we have found both the biomes that we need after a little while of searching. We're going to spend the rest of today in this birch forest right here. Okay, so we've been back and forth quite a few times now waiting for both of these starter Pokemon to spawn and nothing has come up just yet. But while I was waiting, I decided to have a little look on the GTS to see if I could find any of the Pokemon that we need on here since I haven't really bought many off of the GTS yet. Unfortunately, there's only like Cyndaquils and they're all like Battle Perfect, so they cost an absolute fortune, like 50k. But I did manage to get myself a rare lucky block that was on the GTS. So I figured we could open this up and see what legendary Pokemon we are going to get. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom. And we get ourselves a Kubfu from the rare lucky block. Let's go ahead and catch that guy. Hey, I love that. We're still not going to use it anyway. Finally, yes. The model looks so derpy, but we finally found the Sprigatito that we were looking for. Let's go. Oh my gosh. It's been so many days searching for this thing to spawn and finally we get it. Now all that's left to do is try and find the Fue Coco. I've stolen Poonda's bike because I want to ride around really fast and hopefully I can get the Fue Coco to spawn faster by riding around on the Zoom bike. Come on, Fue Coco, where are you? Any Fue Cocos? No Fue Cocos. Come on, Fue Coco, please. Surely there's got to be one around here. We've spent so long looking. I don't want to look anymore. And we are getting very close to the end of the 100 days. And I really don't want to end this with one Pokemon missing. So please, Fue Coco, just appear. Yes, finally. Woohoo. We found the Fue Coco. Oh my gosh, that was a long time. Holy! We finally found our Fue Coco that we were looking for. Just need to go ahead and catch him now. And there we go. Crit capture. Oh my gosh, we have done it. Let's go ahead and take all of this stuff back. Here we go. We'll park up the bike nice and neatly. We need to put the final two Pokemon into the enclosures. And then we will be done. And with that, we can now go ahead, remove this chair. We can open the doors. Let's open them up here. There we go. We can open the doors up to our enclosures. Now let's head on inside. So you walk in on the left side here. You have all of the water type starter Pokemon. And this thing looks amazing. We've got the popper down there. We've got all the guys on the ice. We've got some Pokemon up on the logs as well. And you've got Squirtle in the ring. Now you turn around and you've got all the fire type starter Pokemon, including our boys. Our on the volcanoes we've got all the areas in the trees in the savannah area and you head on over 
into this area right here, which is the grass area. We've got a little underneath of all of the trees. You've got some grass type Pokemon playing with each other. And then you head up the ladder and you can see all of the other grass type Pokemon hidden up in the trees up here. And with that, we have finally completed this 100 days of collecting every starter Pokemon.